commit to see this movie. When it comes to the Final Destination series, nothing is more important than the opening disaster. I mean, come on, we all know that. But at some point, you start running out of disastrous events that can happen realistically. Airplane? Done that. Highway? Check. Roller coaster? Yep. Oh, hey, what about a train? Oh, yeah, that's been done too. Then I guess we can go to the next logical place. A race track? Okay, so maybe a little off the beaten path, but with the highway crash being so legendary, returning to the car flipping and engine exploding felt like a no brainer for the franchise. But when the series gets discussed, there's often one film that is at the bottom of everyone's list. So let's look and see why that is and see what the f happened to the final destination. I saw the whole thing, right? There's gonna be a huge crash. Of course there's a crash. There's always a fucking crash. Final Destination 3 had originally been planned to be filmed in 3D. However, budgetary constraints prevented that from happening. But when production ramped up for Final Destination 4, Hollywood was deep into their obsession with 3D. And more importantly, they were seeing the results in their box office receipts. So the decision was made to shoot this sequel in 3D. Final Destination 2's writer, Eric Bress, submitted a script that had the studio very excited and immediately greenlit the film. The film's opening accident would be set at a racetrack, inspired by the Circuit de Monde disaster, which killed 84 people in total. The rest of the movie follows the established structure of person who sees premonition goes around trying to convince others what's happening, while said survivors die around them. James Wong was originally on board to direct, but he eventually had to drop out due to scheduling conflicts with Dragon Ball Evolution. I'm thinking he's really regretting his choice there. Wanting to emulate the bombastic fun of the second film, the studio approached David R. Ellis about returning for this outing. Ellis was interested in the 3D element, so he immediately signed on. It's a lot of tampons for one woman. With characters such as MILF and Mechanic, the final destination isn't exactly a wealth of riches when it comes to interesting characters, or even believable ones. We instead get a pretty bland cast made up of Bobby Campo, Nick Zano, Chantel Van Satin, Haley Webb, and Krista Allen. Fans of Forrest Gump will likely recognize Bubba himself, Mikkel T. Williamson, as genuinely kind George. One person we would unfortunately not see return is Tony Todd, who had appeared as the morgue technician in the first two films, as well as the voice of the devil and rail conductor in three. Todd had a scheduling conflict and was unable to appear, although he does make sure to make an appearance in five. And if you're wondering why the movie is called THE Final Destination and not just Final Destination 4, it's because the studio made the same mistake that Paramount did with Friday the 13th and what they themselves did with Nightmare on Elm Street. They thought it would be the final entry in the series and wanted to label it as such to help out the box office. Given that it would not be the final film, it just makes it even more confusing when talking about the film these days. While the rest of the series had been filmed in Vancouver, Canada, New Orleans had seen itself become a bustling film city with their very favorable tax credits. So Ellis convinced the studio to shoot the film there, which immediately gives it a bit of a different look from the others in the series. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is up for you to decide. There was no proper speedway around in Louisiana though, so they had to go to the Mobile International Speedway in Alabama in order to film the opening car crash. The crash itself is a mixture of CGI and practical, though there's a ton more CGI than the highway crash in 2, especially when it comes to the deaths. Nearly everything here is enhanced in some way, and it makes the effects look rather cheesy especially when you add in the 3D effect, which often just makes things look strange. The deaths in The Final Destination are fast and unrelenting. Krista Allen's MILF gets her teeth taken out and then an engine block slammed into her chest. 
When she actually dies, there's a long drawn out scene in a beauty salon where she ends up getting taken out by a rock to the eye. I've got my eye on you two. The behind the scenes shows the difficulty that the filmmakers went through to come up with such fun practical effects. It's an absolute mystery as to why they decided to ruin them with so much CGI on top of them. It's hard not to think of the Thing prequel, which released around the same time. Some of the deaths that are present are so over the top, they're hard to even be scared of. One of the great things about the first two films was that it put the characters in situations that you could see yourself in. It's impossible to be behind a log truck and not think about Final Destination 2. Here, it's just unrelatable event after unrelatable event. Just look at the mechanic who gets hit by compressed air into a fence which cuts him up. Who is scared of that happening to them in real life? Even one of the deaths that is most anticipated, given that it's douchebag Hunt who's going to get it, ultimately ends in a whimper. We mostly just get shots of him struggling underwater, only for there to be a bunch of blood and guts eventually coming out of the drain. So like many of the deaths here, it just feels very underwhelming. I'm not going to lie though, I still get a kick out of behind the scenes stuff like this where they're essentially telling the extras how to die. You're in pain! Got the crap kicked out of you! Here we go! Oh, and make sure to keep an eye out for the Clear River shout out while Nick is out and about. Even if it makes very little sense when you actually think about the fact that Clear is an actual person in this universe. As has been a trend when it comes to this franchise, when the studio took the film to test screenings, audiences were not happy with the ending. See, the original ending had Nick sacrificing himself in order to get the people out of the theater. Only once Lori and Janet are out, a giant piece of equipment absolutely crushes them, with only one of their hands left over. Then there was another alternate ending that they tried where Nick gets sucked into the escalator that killed Lori and dies. Funny enough, these reshoots were actually done at Universal Studios down in Florida. So if the ending looks like a theme park ride, you know why. Instead of either of these endings, they opted for what we got in the film, where they seemingly escape the theater chaos only to be hit by a truck while enjoying their coffee. Given that it's entirely CGI, it's hard not to be disappointed with the decision. Usually these reshoots were meant to ramp up the ending, not make it end like some kind of violent cartoon. The Final Destination would serve as the first film in the series not to be scored by Shirley Walker. Instead, Brian Tyler took over composing duties, and as such, the score is much more hard rock and bombastic than the films in the past. There's also a considerable amount of commercial music, with Shinedown's Devour getting ample placement during the race. The Final Destination released in the United States on August 28, 2009, and brought in $28.3 million on its opening weekend. The film would end its box office total at $187 million. This entry is commonly referred to as the worst in the franchise, and it's not too difficult to see why when you notice the reviews. With a 27% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, the critical consensus is that, with little of the ingenuity of previous installments, The Final Destination is predictable, disposable horror fare. Since it's a 3D movie, that also means that we got a 3D home video release. But I'll tell you right now, it's certainly no Avatar. Sadly, director David R. Ellis passed away in 2013 due to undisclosed reasons. Which is really too bad, as he had a very unique view of the franchise that would probably benefit the series during its extended hiatus. If there's one thing that his Final Destination films have, it's that they're a boatload of fun. And while The Final Destination may be the weakest entry in the franchise, it's still a fun time at the movies. The 3D gimmick just increases the absurdity of most of the situations and makes it a perfect film to half watch with friends while mostly making fun of it. So long as you're getting some entertainment from the film, then it must be doing something right.